You saw it a few weeks ago with the with the very, very, very left wing of, mm-hmm. of Congress. Mm-hmm. I forget everyone who was in there, but it was like Rashida Tlaib, Jamie Raskin. There was like 30 of them. They had a letter released. The Ukraine. The U- yeah. and, they, and what they were calling for was there, there, there has been information to suggest. I'm not saying it's for sure, but there's information to suggest that there is a potential for a deal that would allow Ukraine to not lose anything from, mm-hmm. from what, they, what they got and could potentially negotiate a peace here mm-hmm. and de-escalate this situation while giving Ukraine effectively a W. Not a full W. Russia still exists. You know, mm-hmm. there's still country and everything. Yeah. But like, you know, because they want to like end them. Mm-hmm. But it would give them a W. And this has been something that in the mainstream media has been shut down. Anyone who even suggests it as an idea is a fucking pro-Putin troll. So they put out this the, – the far left wing of, mm-hmm. of, of, the, of Congress mm-hmm. puts out this letter that I'm like, good on them. Like, okay, cool. And within a day, what did you see? They, they had to come out mm-hmm. and say – a staff or a leak. That's bullshit. Mm-hmm. They were told to shut the fuck up and mm-hmm. get in line. So yeah. even at the level of the people who mm-hmm. are elected, yeah. when they believe in something, which they actually, in that case, those people, I think they do stand for that, right? They want to see peace. These are not foreign policy hawks, so to speak. That's not what mm-hmm. they ran on. Yeah. The people like that. There's other people who are certainly within that party. Mm-hmm. But it's like they can't even talk. So yeah. how do we solve that where if we're going to exchange ideas, that includes having nuanced ideas within our own party? Mm-hmm. Well, I think – the first thing on that is I think uh, the way that we stop and end the um, what's happening in uh, with happening with Ukraine and Russia is Russia leaves Ukraine. I think the second thing is that's how we end it. That's like I think that is how we end it. That's what they were it. talking about. Well, I think the difference is they were kind of they were the letter was written in a way that was trying to say that like Ukraine has to cede some points, which to me was kind of ridiculous because at the at the end of the day, if someone came to the United States and invaded the United States, would any of us be asking them? Would any of any of us be saying, well, let's make a deal to give up Texas and no. to cut New York? You're right. Exactly. You're right. We would say we are keeping ours. And that's what the Ukraine people are doing. So I admire their strength. I think the Ukraine people have stood up to a tyrannical nation and have fought back. And I think that is what they're doing. They're doing the right thing. And I think at the end of the day, that letter, I think, you know, Stafford League, whatever, maybe they were no, told. No, Stafford League. Yeah, maybe they were told that, okay, you know, you need, you need to end this, like, at the end of the day, I think that letter was disastrous, and I think it was a slap in the face to essentially the negotiations that even could bring about change. Because, but by- they're not even. You, you do understand mm-hmm. there, and this, by the way, yeah. this is a bipartisan problem. The, mm-hmm. the, the Republicans and Democrat war hawks mm-hmm. are in there, not even entertaining the idea of peace that could get Ukraine a W. Because what this letter, and I don't have it in front of me, mm-hmm. but this, I, I'm not sure what detail they went into with it. I can't remember that, so I'm not going to say right now. But the, there is there is on the table, there is intelligence to suggest that there is a possibility. I'm not saying that this definitely is on the table, but there is a possibility that Ukraine would be allowed to draw the lines back to where it was on February 1st, 2022. Mm-hmm. So the only thing Russia would have would potentially would be Crimea. And so to me, it, like they've had that for nine, 10 years, and mm-hmm. we can argue about that too. But to me... De-escalating the biggest nuclear power in the world, getting Ukraine a W, perhaps also getting them a little extra protection as well to make sure that there's not an incentive for another invasion, which I'm down with negotiating that, fully mm-hmm. understand a need for something like that to be in there. How do you not consider that? I don't con- – what I consider a slap in the face is when I see all these neocons who, uh, who might as well be the sperm of George Bush <laughs> out there going, never surrender. We're going in. We're sending tanks. We're fucking these people up the asshole in Russia. <laughs> That's what they're saying. Mm-hmm. And it's it's Democrats. It's everyone from the from the from the Hillary Clinton wing of the Democratic Party all the way to someone current like like Lindsey Graham in the Republican Party right now. Mm-hmm. Like we need to look at ideas that could de-escalate the situation mm-hmm. without giving Ukraine an L. I'm with you. Don't mm-hmm. give them an L. Yeah. Like, give them a W. I'm just saying maybe the W isn't that Russia's off the face of the map. Mm-hmm. Well, I think again, um, it's. I I think the way that we're kind of positioning this is as if the United States has kind of this 
overall kind of deciding factor as to what Ukraine can do. I think the United States has a big role in their acts where along with a lot of the Western, like the World War II Western alliance has sort of come back and like basically helped, you know, has funded Ukraine war efforts. But at the end of the day, it's like, it's really up to Ukraine as to how they decide this is going to work out. I disagree. Like, okay, well, well, tell me why. <laughs> We're here talking. Because <laughs> we, we've given them a lot of yeah, I we're, think we're I think control. that's true, but I don't think I think to a certain extent though. Like what you know, at the mean? at the end of the day, like you know, we can talk. We can the numbers are in the millions. I imagine like you know, mil military grade technology is not expensive, but still, it's up to the Ukraine people decide to decide how they want their government to act. And so to say that you know the United States should go to Ukraine and be like, hey, do this, like which one to me kind of furthers the idea that I think that you're trying to talk again, which is against, which is that like the United States, like kind of like grandfathers, like this nation tells it what to do. When in reality, we're kind of in the opposite sense, grandfathering them to stop fighting. Um, So I think both sides are dangerous when the reality is we should continue to the one support the Ukraine people because they have a right to their own sovereign state. And two, we should let them decide how they want to handle this war. And the best way to end the war is to Ukraine to get out of its of a country that's not theirs. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.